one of my favorite things about the show is that you know fantasy and these kind of shows don't always have the depth and the richness of characters but rings of power is so deep there's so much like richness to these characters i i love every second of it so i guess starting with you cynthia where where can you what can you say about where we're going to find the queen queen regent this season how how is she doing She's not doing well, admittedly. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing. I'm doing great. Um, but Midiel, uh, you know, has suffered a lot of loss and tragedy by the end of season one, and we just pick right back up with the beginning of season two. So she's lost her vision. She's lost her father, the king. So presumably, there's a, a transition of power to be had there, and she's lost a massive battle, and in turn, many Numenorean lives. So you know, people are angry with her. Um, not necessarily confident that she is the one that's meant to lead Numenor, you know, into the next uh, chapter, as it were. And uh, there are going to be other forces, other voices trying to, uh, you know, slot into that power vacuum. So it, there's a lot of uh, interesting, you know, political and dramatic intrigue in Numenor. And it's a, it's a very fun sort of uh, space to play in as an actor. So I think that uh, people will be very interested to see what happens in Numenor this season. There's quite a bit of, like, uh, attempted backstabbing, uh, we'll say, at least. <laughs> Uh, a little bit, but I think, you know, Midiel really, it's been great to navigate her and maintain, even in the face of all of uh, this loss, maintain her sense of strength and her understanding of, you know, what it is to be a leader. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're both in leadership roles in our parts of the world. And, and there is something quite interesting about what it is to be at the top tier. Yeah. Heavy is the head that wears the crown and all that. And, and very isolating. I, I always think about the sense of there's a very small inner circle you potentially have, very few people that you can comfortably confide in. So I think there's a lot of interesting things there. But uh, but yeah, very juicy stuff. Well, Benjamin, I mean, talk about juicy. The, the kind of <laughs> pairs of people he has to try and trust and decide who who might be doing the right thing or not. And you know, where does he stand? Well, I mean, I think he's... I, I think he's a good leader in the sense that he gives you enough rope to hang yourself, but also will pull you back in if you need help. Um, eh, the metaphor I like to use is that of a, a loving parent, which is, okay, you got yourself up in that tree, now get yourself down. And um, he certainly, especially in this season, between Galadriel and Elrond, it's like, you two, go to your rooms. <laughs> and they just are really making a mess of things. But um, he also is thinking long term enough to to allow them the grace to find their own destinies, and he knows how powerful they both are. Um, I mean, Galadriel, I guess, technically is older than I am, so the metaphor falls apart. But um, in terms of leadership, the freedom within the structure to become who we know they'll become. And I mean. He he really has to weigh damned if I do, damned if I don't here in, in a certain regard. Yeah. <laughs> well, and remember, these are the elves that chose to stay in the beginning. So for them right. to abandon Middle Earth at this point, which is to abandon Middle Earth to consume itself, mm -hmm. it won't survive if we leave. Um, if there's any glimmer of hope, even if it's this unknown technology, which are these rings, we have to, to hold on to that little glimpse of hope. Otherwise, there are no more books. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll ask really fast is, could you name a favorite scene partner? Is there someone that you could say? Favorite scene partner? Well, I have a lot of really great stuff with uh, Mr. Lloyd Owen, mm. who plays Elendil, and um, there's a beautiful sort of evolution of a relationship that in season one starts very much as leader, loyal servant, uh, to something interesting, I will tease. Um, I don't want to put a label on it, you know? Um, <laughs> but, I, but I think that Lloyd and I thought a lot about, you know, when two people sort of suffer a joint trauma how does the relationship change when you've really been through something that intense? And I think mm -hmm. you're going to see you're going to see the answer to that in uh, season two. So, and we just have a good time. We just have fun. All right, I'd say. Well, I mean, obviously, 
Rob and Miv are incredible, but everybody's going to say how great they are. <laughs> so um, I, I get one little scene with Ben Daniels, who plays Kirdan, uh, the shipwright. And yeah. if you know history from the books, he's kind of Gilgalad's surrogate father. Mm-hmm. And also for me, Ben Daniels, um, the first uh, Broadway show I ever did, Ben was in it and he was he looked after me on that show. And so for us to be like, there was one day where we couldn't get through a take because we're wearing these wigs, we've got these ears on, and like, Ben? And he's like, Ben? And it was just the, this moment where we kind of came together as friends, but also as lovers of Tolkien and as kind of father and son. And, and then, you know, he gives me the rings. I mean, it was a surreal moment where he, he's such a beautiful and funny man that you can really see it in that kind of twinkle in his eye. So I'd, I'd say I enjoyed doing scenes with him, but actually I really enjoyed the proximity of which I could watch him work again. Like I was, I was the closest audience member and I had the best seat. He's That's great. amazing. Thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you.